Hey YouTube, so yeah, today we've got this Volvo XC90. It's actually spraying down the full side today, and we've got the tailgate. Now, I do actually have a front bumper, rear bumper, door moldings, and all that, but I was never going to have enough part, uh, room to fit that, especially in this smaller spray booth. So I decided to break the job up into two. The other thing is that it's two o'clock in the afternoon, and um, it's going tomorrow, so I really especially wanted to get some um, some paint onto this tailgate so that they can they can get that glass put in tomorrow and, and the paint's got overnight to cure to harden up before they go and put that glass in. So, so and also they they can get the car back, they can start fitting the tailgate up and the doors up. And then um, I can be working on the rest of the park. So yeah, it's all good. But I've actually got another guy waiting for me behind me in line for this spray burst. That was never going to be the case, but he got a last minute job come up on himself. So it's all good. So yeah, it's just um, bright silver, I think it was called, something like that, but Volvo Color 711 with the paint code. So, yeah, like it's winter now, but even in winter, this stuff can still dry a little bit too quick for you, depending on the spray. So, for those who don't know, I'm using Sando Boost. And um, if you have the boost turned up too hot, it can actually make a bit of a mess, even out of, even out of like single panels like this tailgate. Uh, if you're not careful, so you just got to be careful the way you spray it and how hot your boost is. So I've actually turned the boost down to 24 um, when I'm applying my base coat. Once I've got the base coat down, I will actually crank it up just to um, maybe 30 or 34 or something just to get that base coat drying a little bit quicker. And um, yeah, also if it's if this uh, if this stuff. Um, start drying as you're spraying you'll just make an absolute mess and it's like it'll go on mottily so yeah that's why I've found that you're actually best off spraying both coats on the outside so your first coat and your second coat on the outside and then coming in and doing the inside of the tailgate um, yeah I've tried a few different methods with this system on like new parts and I've found that this way works the best because sometimes what can happen is like you'll go and put your first coat on the outside um, I've tried that putting one coat on the outside one coat on the inside and then coming back to the outside but sometimes it'll actually already be dry and as I said if if it starts drying it'll go all mottily so that's actually looking pretty good I've got a feeling that'll dry down nicely you probably notice I only really put one coat up the top there you don't see any of that uh, so this is all wipe down i've wiped all the car down with water cleaner i might actually top that up yeah that's not going to be enough that's one thing i've definitely noticed about this paint like you really churn through it man you use a lot of material the other guys i work with agree with me too man like probably use more of this than you do with the solvent but it is what it is I'm not saying that in a like negative ways if I don't like the system but it is what it is mate like I just find that you use a, a little bit more of this than I do with the solvent even though you're putting less coats on like the way that you have to put it on makes you use a little bit more <laughs> so this fender here was actually not even down to be sprayed on the job sheet but I just decided it's going to make for a better job just to do it. Um, yeah, I didn't even ask the bosses. I just did it, man. Like, just mask it all up. Get photos. They can either charge the insurance company for it or not. But either way, I don't really care. It's not like it took me more than five minutes to get it ready, you know. And it will definitely make for a better job, I think so, anyway. Sometimes these silvers can be a bit funky with their blends in this system. 
But what you notice you're doing here is just blowing out all those edges an extra little bit because when I wipe it down with the water cleaner, I like to spray it on. You've probably seen me do that before, but I obviously did that off camera this time for this video, but yeah, just give it a really good tack rag. You might get a bit bored of watching me tack rag and tack rag and tack rag, but I do give them a very good tack rag for a reason, because I, I really do want to get a nice clean job. So truth be told, I actually don't do much of my own polishing anyway. We've got, we've got a detailer out the back there who does probably 90% of my polishing. It's usually only like late in the week, say Friday or something, when I've painted all my cars. If there's a job that I've painted that's still going that hasn't been polished, I'll go out and get that polished. But yeah, early in the week, I don't usually do any polishing at all. All right, so we're about to go now. So I've got some slow, this is color blender here. So it's basically clear base coat. It goes on looking all milky, but it does dry fully clear. So I'm only gonna do this where I don't wanna put any color. So I don't want any color up these pillars. I've also found that putting this stuff on makes for a nice clean job. For whatever reason it is, I don't ever know exactly why, but for whatever reason it just makes the job really clean. Crank that pressure up just down the two bar. So I think I'll do... So you want the first coat on sort of like that. That's, that's actually just one coat. I didn't go quite wet enough on the first pass. So... I've actually got some... Um, slow and fast thinners in this one. Because I didn't want it to go dry on me too quick because it's a reasonable size job so I've decided I'll do that this time I'll just do two panels and then go back to the start so that's the first coat and this is obviously my second coat the drop coat holding the gun right back it can be hard like I was only really aiming here but colour's gone up there but it, it's all good like the colour's actually really good anyway and as I said before we're painting the whole side I'm confident that the colour's going to look nice up to that guard anyway. If the colour was a bit out and I needed that blend, I could have turned that pressure down a bit, but I decided not necessary. So yeah, this stuff can look a bit funky when you haven't um, dried it yet, but then it dries out looking all nice, so... So you might have noticed I put my first coat on from the bottom to the top and then my second coat from the top to the bottom because it actually looked like it was starting to dry up the tops already. That should dry down really nice to be honest. Yeah, I'm gonna go crank the pressure, sorry, crank the heat up on the boot, go get my blower and I'll be back in a sec. Yeah, so here we are drying that base coat down. I cranked the boot up to like 34 degrees just to get it drying nice and quickly. So, got my trusty DeVilvis air blower here. It actually pumps a, a nice, really nice volume of air through it. So, it actually dries it down relatively nicely. Like. I can already see here that it's just starting to flash off. But um, 
One thing you do have to be a little bit careful of, like when you're using these blowers, not to pick too much dust up from the floor. Radio, let's get back to this job now. So that's all dried down and looking nice. We'll land a couple of coats of clear on it. So as I mentioned before, somebody is waiting for this boat. So I'm going to get in and out as quick as possible. I've got the heat cranked up on the boat to 34. I think I mentioned that before. And yeah, look, that's warmer than you would usually set it, but well, it's no warmer than a 34 degree day. I actually heated the clear up too. So I put the clear into the microwave for a mix up a litre and I put it in the microwave for 30 seconds. As crazy as it sounds, it actually worked really well. So, thank God I'm using it instead of standard clear as usual. So if you're a new subscriber around here, I'd like to say a big welcome and sorry that I've been away for so long. I um, I actually used to upload loads on this, this channel and then I got to the point where some people couldn't hear me talking and um, I just gave up and my man stop it. <laughs> You'll get nothing then because I couldn't make fun of the complaining. Like, I think the last video there was like, I don't know, it felt like 10 people, it might not have even been that many to be honest, but it did feel like there was a lot of people complaining about it and I'm just like, man, I can't be bothered with it, eh? I'm just going to give it up. So I did, and, um, and then recently I actually had somebody on my Instagram page just say, hey, I miss the raw videos, so I decided I would um, start uploading again and see how it's received by the community since it's a market. But I don't know, it's like, it's pretty, it's to me, like, it's pretty obvious that this is not my main channel, you know? Like, I, I do have a main channel, like, if you want, call it, like, better quality audio, um, better quality, more edited videos, like, that main channel's still there, you know? And, I don't know, you don't have to watch this, it's just like live streams, you know? I, I personally don't like live streams. So, when a YouTuber I like to follow uploads a live stream or does a live stream, but it's same what? I guess it's the same as this channel, you know? Like, if it, if it's not bad, like, you don't have to watch. I actually don't really care. going for the big boat with, with the big tails like this but another guy's in there he's got a jag and it's, well, it's a re-spray except for three panels but he's got to spray everything except for the roof the bonnet and the boot lift so yeah he gets the big boat how's that look all good mate all good did i get enough up in there it can be tricky sometimes to get inside inside those edges Ugh, I can barely even see properly. I'll, I'll put a bit more on. You do have to be careful because the next thing that happens is you get run. That'll be it. That'll be enough, mate. Rightio, let's keep going.
a little bit dry. Might turn that pressure down a bit. Just wet it up a little bit through the guts there. I mean, if it was a Japanese car, I'd probably just leave that, but turn that pressure down so it goes on a bit chunkier. And just pound another, a little bit on. I'm just going over this yard now so that that doesn't turn into dry press. So it's really not going to take long. Not going to take long until I'm going to be able to hit bake on this bad boy either. That should be flashing off. Nice and fast, man. Yeah, that looks good, man. Yeah, I can already feel it starting to flash off, starting to, just starting to tuck off. I might even actually hit fake on that bad boy straight away just because that guy's waiting for me. So, yeah, I'll leave it at that for this video, Gunners. If you're interested, go check out the link in the description. There'll be a link to the um, where you can get some of the government merchandise. And until next time, get out there and punch some shit. Coming out. I'd like to say a big thanks to everyone for watching and if you'd like to support the channel further you're more than welcome to go over and check out some of the merchandise we've got. My personal favourite is those spray suits so they're a good quality Colad branded spray suit with a gunman logo on it. There's also hats, drink coolers, hoodies and t-shirts so be sure to go over and check out the link in the description if you are interested. All that aside I'd just like to say a big thanks for watching and that is enough to support the channel but as I say if you'd like to go the next step then be sure to check out some of that merchandise. Thanks for watching and until next time get out there and paint some shit. Gunman out.